raven's flock, the flock run down is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. The flock run down. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense can tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? My name is Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of The Flock Rundown. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the new intro. If you're just listening on audio, you probably didn't get the full experience. I threw a bunch of cool clips together and stuff uh, to give the channel a little bit of a lift, but still got Ray on there. And shout out to all the audio listeners, too. We're now on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Amazon Podcast, everywhere that you would listen to podcasts. So if you want to go on there and help support, leave a five-star rating. I would uh, greatly appreciate it. If you're just on YouTube, love you guys as well. We just want to keep expanding the podcast and the reach. But enough of all that. Let's get into what we're talking about today. There's no practice or anything today for the Ravens. They have their final preseason game tomorrow against the Packers. So I kind of wanted to run through a lot of the bubble players, a lot of the roster battles that I will be keyed in on that are kind of still up in the air, especially some guys that we don't know if they're going to make the team or not. So I just want to highlight those guys, talk about them a little bit before tomorrow's preseason game. And then on Sunday, I'll probably have a preseason recap of the game. And then on Monday, we'll be dropping the final roster predictions because by Tuesday, they need the final roster cut down. And then on Wednesday, the practice squad has to be filled out. So first position we'll start with is the quarterback's Obviously, we're not going to talk about the guys that are locks to make the team. We can do that in the roster prediction video, but I wanted to hone in on the guys that are still fighting to make the team and who actually have something to play for tomorrow. And I think that that is Devin Leary and Emery Jones. I think that both of those quarterbacks are playing for something. Now, could they both stay on the team and end up being on the practice squad? Yes, but I think that this game does mean something, not only for their Ravens chance, but just a chance in the rest of the league. Neither of these guys are locks. Neither of these guys are guaranteed to sign on the practice squad or even stay on the practice squad. If someone goes out there and balls out and really creates an opportunity for themselves, they might end up being a backup somewhere else. You never know. So I think that there's a lot on the line for these two players. We saw Emery Jones in that second game take a big leap. He didn't play much in the first game. I know they threw him in on that final drive and he had that fumble, which is just unfortunate, but he looks great in the second game. So looking to see how he continues into this third game. And then Devin Leary got a little bit less playing time last week, wasn't really flashing. So just interested to see if either of these guys can really step up, have great games, kind of make it difficult for the Ravens to cut them and uh, or another team to step up and sign them, you know? So I I just think that those are two key players to watch at the quarterback position. Moving over to the running back position, it's still just Owen Wright, Rasheen Ali. I think that those are the two names that are going to make the team or have the best chance of making the team. Everyone else is probably definitely destined for practice squad or just to be released. But I'm definitely watching Owen Wright and Rasheen Ali if he plays. I think Owen Wright will definitely play. Rasheen Ali's been battling that stinger. But both of these guys have a great opportunity in front of them. I don't think they're going to cut Rasheen Ali just because he's a fifth-round pick. But we have seen that before. We saw that last year with Caillou Blue Kelly. That was a recent draft pick that we cut, and then he's been bouncing around. So... I wouldn't say there's no chance of it. I just think that it's unlikely. I think Rasheen Ali is on this team in one form or another, even if they got to throw him on IR or something. But hopefully he does play because I think Owen Wright and Rasheen Ali are both playing for a lot. And then at the wide receiver position, there's a lot of guys still fighting for spots. I mean, I think Tez Walker and Tylen Wallace are safe, so I'm not really going to discuss them too much. I think that... uh, It's really a battle between Deontay Hardy, who seems to be the favorite because he is probably going to be our kick returner and then somewhat involved in the offense. So it seems like he will probably make the team, but I still think that there's a true battle there. I think that Anthony Miller has a great chance of making this team if he can really ball out and step up. Dayton Wade has flashed multiple times throughout this offseason and the preseason game last week. I think he has a, a real, real chance to make this team. And then guys like Keith Kirkwood, Malik Cunningham, Russell Gage, 
These are all interesting names that I'm not writing off and I still think have something to play for in this preseason game. They've had moments throughout this offseason and the preseason that they've shined and stepped up. So are they going to make the team? Probably not. You know, I, I think that that group is probably not favored to make the team, but they're still fighting for something. They're not just completely written off, and I'll be watching them closely. I think that they got a lot to play for as well. The tight end room's pretty set. I think Kadir Ismail is the only name that has some kind of momentum behind it that I feel like could find a roster spot or at least a practice squad spot. I'm not sure that they want to completely part ways with him. I could see him being moved to the practice squad. But other than that, I don't think anyone is really battling to make the 53 at at the tight end position. They're going to have Mark, Isaiah, Charlie Kohler, and Pat Ricard, whatever you want to consider him. So I think uh, I think they're pretty set there, but I could see Kadir Ismail making the practice squad, and I think that he's definitely one to watch in tomorrow's preseason game. We've been talking nonstop, it feels like, about the Ravens' offensive line and who's going to start and whatnot, so this isn't a segment for that. You know, I think that all those guys that we've been debating are all going to make the team, but the guys that are on the bubble of the offensive line that may or may not make the team and are really playing for something tomorrow, I would say it's probably Nick Samak or Samak. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. Um, the backup center, the seventh round pick that we drafted this year. He ran with the ones the other day in practice. Now, obviously, Tyler Linderbaum's out, but I just think that that's a good sign for him, and I would like to see him to run with the ones in this preseason game. Let's see if we're going to want to keep him on the active roster or not. He's also a recent draft pick, but he's a seventh round pick, so I think he is either going to make it or be a practice squad candidate. I don't think that they're going to lose him. And then the other guy that's on the bubble, I would say, is Sala. We drafted him last year, late round pick. He hasn't really shined or flashed too much, but he's definitely fighting for something too. So I think Samak and Sala are two guys to be glued in on that are on this bubble that may or may not make the team. Uh, the rest of the offensive line, I think, is going to make the team, whether who starts and whatnot is a, is a topic for a different day. But uh, I think that the unit is solidified, the depth of the unit. There's not a lot of battles there. So I'm definitely keyed in on those two guys, especially. And then flipping over to the defensive side of the ball, there's a couple interesting names at linebacker that I think are still kind of solidifying their role or spot on this team. And that would be Josh Ross and Joe Evans. Josh Ross, probably the favorite to make the roster at this point, but Joe Evans is another interesting name. He played a ton throughout this preseason, has looked solid. He definitely plays hard. I like what he brings to the table. I think uh, he has a chance. It's definitely an outside chance, but he has a chance. He definitely has a chance for the practice squad. Most of the guys that get cut that the Ravens want to keep are going to just go to their practice squad, so they're not really gone. But as you know, you can get signed to another team's active roster off of the practice squad. So that's a risk that you got to take. And then the main other defensive position group that people are still battling for, I would say, is in the secondary, the cornerbacks and the safeties, especially the back end cornerbacks like Pepe Williams and Trayvon Mullen. I think Pepe is probably going to make the team, but he's definitely going to play and is still on that bubble. He's still fighting for a spot. I think Trayvon Mullen is definitely fighting for a spot. Guys like Christian Matthew. So I'm definitely watching those guys closely. I think this is a big game for them. Also, the safety spot, Sanusi Kane, Daryl Worley, who are we keeping? Bo Braid. I think that there's a, a couple guys there that definitely have a shot at making this team. Sanusi Kane's been flashing a couple times throughout camp, just how hard he plays. And then that first preseason game, he flashed. Bo Braid last preseason game was flashing so I do think there's a back end battle there and I I think one of those guys is definitely going to make the team it's just a matter of which one which one do you want to keep on the practice squad or try and play the IR game or whatever the Ravens plan is but I'm definitely watching those safeties the back end cornerbacks because there's still a few interesting names floating there that are going to make the team so Saturday's preseason game becomes crucial for a lot of these guys that we're talking about you know most of the roster is pretty set the starters are set a lot of the immediate backups and depth guys are also set I would say this year is probably the least dramatic year of of a lot of guys on the bubble that 
might have an important role or whatnot. I think most of the roster is pretty filled out, but there are some back end guys who are still there on the bubble. There are going to be some tough decisions. So I just think that that adds a little bit of excitement into Saturday's preseason game. I know most of us are ready for week one at this point, ready for the final roster to be cut down and let's get this show rolling. You know, let's get the regular season started. I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm excited for that too. But that's it for today's episode. I appreciate you guys as always for tuning in to another episode of the Flock Rundown. Have a beautiful rest of your day and I'll talk to you guys soon. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim there where the sense can tame the untamed.